My name is Beatrice Catanzaro, I'm uh, Italian, and I, I'm a visual artist. I've been doing several art projects, mainly related with uh, social intervention, but not only. And uh, what I want to share with you today is uh, a couple of projects that I'm uh, uh, involved in and running in uh, Nantes. Cannot be any cut in the I'm not going to reenacting myself. Um, right, the next uh, project I want to share with you. Now I'm giving the shoulder to the latest person. I'm sure that they will not sleep, but I guess that the guys here will probably be so Um I first arrived uh, in Palestine through a uh, decolonizing architecture, actually. I guess you know. I was in a residency in Betsafur uh, with them uh, in 2009. Uh, but at that time, actually, I was more curious to explore other places in, in the West Bank. So I made my way to Nablus several times. Um, I can't tell you really what, what Shank made from the city, but uh, it's a very shallow city. And, uh, well, I'll tell you more about the story on how I ended up there later on. But one, uh, one of the things that, uh, two of the projects that I want to share with you is one that I developed with the library of Nablus, and the other one that I'm uh, working uh, uh, on in the old city of Nablus with a bunch of tough Palestinian ladies. Uh, the first project, this is the... It's an image from the from the library in Nablus. You know Nablus, of course. You've been there. So yeah. Have you ever been to the library? No. 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 They have I think the biggest library in the West Bank. What's the name? Uh, Nablus Municipality Library. Maktab Tibaladir. I spent uh, three years there, basically. Well, not every day, of course. So, one of the interesting sections in this library, it's, uh, well, this is an image from the section, it's, uh, it's called the prisoner section. It's a section that hosts around uh, 8,000 books, which were read by Palestinian prisoners in the two ex uh, detention centers. Uh, one in uh, Nablus and one in Jeanette. Um, it's in the outskirts of Nablus. They were in Jeanette. Jeanette. It's named Jeanette. Uh -huh. of, of the page. Jeanette. It's my Italian pronunciation. Or Indian. <laughs> so once the two prisons closed down um, with the Oslo agreement, the Palestinian Authority collected all the books and donated them to the Municipality Library in Nablus. Now, when I first arrived there, the, the books were full of dust, and it was not a very much visited place. But I found, I found incredibly fascinating the books themselves. This was one of the first shelf, I mean, not, not reading Arabic, you have to apologize me. But this was one of the first shelves that kind of attracted my, my uh, imagination. So you have a sequence of uh, very special books, of course. My first visit was uh, three years back, and then I just kept on going there. Mainly going through the books. I spent like two months uh, every week sitting there. The ladies of the library didn't speak English, they didn't speak Arabic, but they had tea, coffee, I was looking at the books. Uh, what I was attracted, sorry if I sound a little bit uh, naive, I know that for you it has a very strong meaning, but for me it was like exploring object, to be very honest. Uh, to see how on the surface of the books they were all the um, are you trying to find a way to, to um, uh, 
the, 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 the covers of the book were, are, a lot of them are cladded with uh, magazines, uh, papers. Um, so mainly they had, in those two prisons, they had the Rigid Digest and the National Ge Geographic as magazines. Mm -hmm. So they were using images from those magazines. So you could, in a way, read um, the first books enter the prisons in 72. Uh, so you could read uh, from 72 to 95 kind of public history. So you can see images from uh, Bill Clinton. Down the left is an image from uh, the Berlin Wall. You know, kind of public history unfolding. Well, on the inside, of course, you have a lot of uh, annotations, drawings. Uh, I found this page beautiful. Uh, in the spite of the title of the chapter, which is quite... Uh, Suicidal behavior in Cairo. So what I did was to start to do photographic documentation. Now, after a couple of months, of course, the ladies in the library, in the, in the archival uh, floor where this section is, they started to wonder, what the hell does she want to do here? She's coming every week, she's sitting here, she's taking pictures. And uh, oh, this is a very beautiful annotation. Um, the librarian, the prisoner librarian, he, uh, there are several of those, basically is asked to, who is the reader, to uh, take care of this book, because another reader will read it later on. Uh, this is another book I found in the in the section that contained the uh, capsula. Yeah. So this was uh, I discovered later on the story of the specific book. It was a communist uh, prisoner who uh, cut it out this book that deals with uh, the history of Islam and placed inside the capsula dealing with the national history of Palestine. <laughs> now, the, th the thing was that this book was closed for like 30 years. And because I went through all of them, I, f I found it. But then by discussing with ex-prisoners, uh, and introduce you to them later on, in a second, um, the, this ex-prisoner, Khalil, he remember exactly when this event happened and the fight that was there between prisoners because someone destroyed a book. Doesn't matter what is the theme, but that because the books were such a precious thing in prison, and you know, the, the very idea of destroying one for placing a capsula was something that uh, created a big, uh, uh, a big issue. Um, at a certain point, I was trying to inquire with, uh, um, with the ladies uh, running this uh, prisoner section um, to understand if prisoners still are going to visit the section. If, you know, because I could understand from the very object that there was a very strong uh, emotional connection. And uh, one of the ladies told me this beautiful story that uh, not long time ago, a few years ago, a man went to visit the library in Davos and he asked for a specific book. And she was a little bit surprised, but she found the book. He didn't even open it, but he was looking at the... He was inquiring in the binding of the book. And the reason why he was inquiring in the binding was that he was looking for his needle to do embroidery. Embroidery. Yeah. I learned the word quite late. So. Um, so he was hiding the needle. Because of course the needle was his companion for several years in prison and he wanted to find it back. 
uh, when she told me the story, uh, she also told me, listen, I have a relative, the man on the left, uh, Khalil Ashur, who uh, spent 12 years in prison, and he loves books, and he comes often to the library. Uh, so we arranged the meeting with Khalil, and Khalil and I became very good friends, and started to have a lot of conversations about the very role of books in prison. You know, how they were dealing with educating, and you probably know all of this, and maybe just repeating stories that you know, but for me, of course, were very fascinating to understand what role the books had in prison. Um, how they were transcribing books and smuggling them to other prisons, how they were um, organizing quiz of what they learned through the books uh, and teaching the child also. Um, the man on the right, Abdallah, he was a prisoner mate of Khalil and uh, used to be the book binder and librarian in prison. Uh, so we started to have a lot of meetings and coffees and teas and talking. Um, and then, well, I didn't really know what to do with all this. And I think already one year and a half passed since my first visit to the library. Um, luckily enough, I had uh, in between a conversation with uh, Al Mamal in uh, Quds, which is an art organization. And uh, they told me, listen, our Jerusalem show, which is a uh, yearly exhibition they're having in Jerusalem, this year, meaning last year, deals with text, library, reading. And I told them, listen, I'm, I'm stuck with a great love for this library, but I don't really know what to do with it. Uh, so from this stage, I'm talking about last May, I started to think what I could do with this treasure. With Khalil and Abdallah and all the stuff of the library, of course. So collectively we decided, well, the best thing, since we cannot go to the Quds, is that we smuggle the books to the Quds, or some of them at least. So with, uh, with Khalil, and uh, Lufti and Mohammed, who are responsible for the prisoner section uh, books, we started to select uh, 250 books uh, that we decided to bring to uh, and to exhibit in a private library called uh, Khalidi Library in the old city of Jerusalem. That is a, that has an amazing. Uh, well, those were the books that we smuggled. Just sorry. Yeah. This uh, this this one to bring the book from Nabu Street Library to Jerusalem. Not only, but uh, yeah, this was part of the. Idea. Why? Because uh, partly okay, I was working on different strategies here. <coughs> on the one hand. Uh, uh, the condition of the books in the library was really, really bad. A lot of dust, I got a lot of fleas. I don't know how you say fleas in, uh, in Arabic. Fleas? Little insects that flow. Is that no. Chumpy one, huh? This is? No, it's like... It's small. Uh, so the, the books were full of them. So, you know, I understood that actually if no action is taken to rescue this collection, you know, it, it will be totally damaged. So a uh, great cleansing was needed. Another point was that is, uh, I was always, I, I found it very beautiful that books that prisoners used to read become public in a library. And I wanted to make them even more public, you know, to create a satellite library where, you know, where Khalil cannot go to Ilkuts, uh, the books can travel. So this idea of, of moving them, what we created 
with the collaboration of, of the librarian, of Khalil, Abdallah, was a, a sort of relational space where people in Jerusalem could assess those books. And the whole idea was, was to create a reading space. Now, of course, this is just the moving of objects. But sometimes when you move something, you'll uh, give it another, you know, another, uh, you cast another light on the object itself. And the very idea to display them in a way that people could feel very free to pick them up was that I wanted people to have the same experience that I had when I first entered in the library. So this kind of curiosity and going through also the objects and kind of getting lost in, in this specific beauty beyond the story that they carry. During the exhibition, we organized uh, three talks with Ramallah, with the uh, ex-prisoners that were witnessing their, that were testifying their relation with books in time of imprisonment. It was in a way a strategy to keep the space active not only to have the books, but also to actively engage the audience in an ongoing conversation. Um, with the books, we carried three videos that were three moments that were tracing uh, the, the relation between the state of enclosure and, uh, and books. Um, in the whole process, I asked Khalil to write an essay. Now, we had a very, very friendly relation, but I wanted him to leave some uh, written traces. Of, uh, so if you don't mind, I will read you his words, because I think they're more valuable than what I ever had to say. Um, First is an anecdote. I recall that Aditani, one of his prisoner mates, narrated for us the story of The Miserable, which is a book of uh, Victor Hugo, in several chapters. So in several days, he was telling his prisoner mates, not Hamid, this prisoner mm. mate of him, he used to narrate one chapter every day until he finished the story after two weeks. We used to wait anxiously every day until it's, until it's night time to listen to a new chapter. We all felt as if Jean Valjean, the hero of the novel, was living among us. The last night we were so sad as Jean Braja was leaving our detention center, knowing that we were never we were never to meet him again. And when the moment of separation arrived, a sorrowful silence fell upon all of us. This was a story that preceded the introduction of books in the prison where he was detained at that time. It was in 1970. Now books started to be allowed in 1972. So in this, uh, in this situation they were telling stories to each other, like this one. Then he goes on and from his essays, essay, I citate, the Palestinian prisoner resorted to books, went to books, in order to dream a free them and free themselves through words as well as to escape to an alternative to the lived reality. I apologize for the translation, it's not that good. If the book was a novel, the prisoner lives with his character and moves amongst them from one place to another. Even drops, uh, <laughs> Swedish, <laughs> on their discussion, experience, experience their feelings of the characters 
and walks around in their homes. This feeling creates another life for the prisoner, another world, another reality. I wouldn't have done a video in an early stage because I think that first you need to build up a relation in order to create a trust. And then the, the, you know, the conversation would flow in a much more natural way. Of course this was just a part of the installation because I wanted to bring not only the objects but the, the voice, the direct experience. That, as Khalil always told me, every prisoner has his own experience. So this is their experience. And of course they go through their memory and their, you know, the, the shift that memory makes in also telling a story. Uh, but I wanted my presence to be almost invisible. I wanted to be a vehicle for this story to be unfolded rather than to create an object out of the story. When the book returned from uh, Jerusalem, I did another little exhibition in the library because something that I think occurs often in the, in the activity of visual artists is that they tend to steal. They tend to take things from a reality and not to give back. So for me it was very important that the videos and uh, the display of uh, this is in the library uh, and that Khalil and Abdallah could have a public moment in which they would uh, personally engage with their own relation with those books. And that was also a moment that the prisoner section got totally cleaned up. They put outside um, like a totem to explain the old story of the, it kind of became a space to be proud of. So that, that uh, invisible process of uh, regaining back a space for me was very crucial because you know, the action of moving the books will be forgotten, <coughs> but the books will remain there. So this was how the little installation in the library. Um, now I'm I'm in a point where I would like I would love to move on with the library and to get into another step of of, of collaboration with uh, with Khalil and Abdallah. And uh, at the moment I'm a little bit confused on what could be a, a continuation. Um, for sure, something that I think could be very effective would create would be to create a sort of archive of narratives, quite similar to what you have seen, and to um, create a sort of mapping of narratives that could be ac accessed on a website or in a let's say in a digital archive. Because when you enter the space, you miss the voice of the persons that have been <coughs> engaging in the, with those books. They're not normal books. So I think that this is uh, a future project I, I might engage with. Do you have any questions? I, mean, no. I feel I'm bombarding you with... Uh, <laughs>